Here's a demo about Unicom. First, let's take a look at the cluster. This is a Kubernetes cluster which has five nodes. Um, all the nodes are from AWS, and uh, each node we have about 180 gigabit memory and 48 CPUs. We're going to use this cluster to demonstrate the scheduling capabilities that Unicom provided. So let's first to deploy Unicom. First, we need to take a look at the configuration file. Uh, this configuration file contains all the configuration Unicom needed to run. And um, the most basic thing is about the queues. In this example, we have defined three queues and the root queue in the default partition. Um, for each of the queue, we can define the guaranteed resource as well as the max resource. So, um, guaranteed resource and the max can be a range that defines uh, how much res resource this queue can can use, um, the minimal and the max. In this example, for advertisement and the search queue, we define the elastic range of resources. Um, the queues can use. Like in the development, we allow the queue to use um, minimal 500 gigabytes memory and at the most uh, 800 gigabytes memory. But for the sandbox queue, we define a um, pretty static uh, capacity for this queue and uh, this will ensure it runs under such a limit. Also, in this configuration file, we can specify the placement rules and, and the user limits. Placement rules is, um, um, is actually um, help to map user applications to a certain queue, so user doesn't need to specify the queues in their application request. And the users define the user limits within the cluster, and uh, such as um, the max resource this user can use, and the max applications it can submit. It, it can submit. Then let's deploy this this file using config map. Create a config file. From the file we just um, we just saw, this will create a config map on Kubernetes cluster. Let's take a look at the config map on here. As you can see, it is created here. Then let's create a scheduler. So, um, Unicorn can be deployed as a deployment in Kubernetes, and um, it will run one port. Two containers. Uh, first container is the Unicorn Scheduler core, which contains both the core of the scheduler and the shim layer for Kubernetes. The second container is the scheduler web, which is the user interface um, we provided for 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 Unicorn, and uh, this one is optional. And um, so we 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 have specified the volume config map here in order to let Unicorn to load the configuration from the config map we just created. Let's create the this this command will be will be used to create the Unicorn deployment. Once it's created, let's take a look in the cluster. This is the schedule we just deployed. And uh, in the pod, we can see the two containers. It is, they're running. And uh, then, let's do... Let's take a look at the web interface. So first, we need to do the port uh, forward. Once we do the port forward, we can open the UI.
here is we have the class 35 nodes and uh, in the queues page we can we can see the hierarchy queues we have configured in the configuration file um, and we can click the each box for each box for the queue to to check out the details about this queue for example the the drew queue actually um, is the contains all the resources from the cluster have um, one TB memory um, 100,000 recourse also we can take a look at the child queues we have defined in each one of them have um, the config capacity and the max capacity showing up here then right now uh, because we don't have we, we haven't submit applications so this they are empty so let's let's run the uh, application first let's run a batch sleep application so this application actually launched 50, 50 ports and each of them just simply sleep for 300 uh, seconds and um, uh, we have specified the application ID and the queue. Those are will be picked up by the scheduler, Unicorn scheduler, um, and uh, this application will be scheduling under this queue. Also, the scheduler name is Unicorn. Let's submit a request. So let's first submit the first batch. This will be submitted in sandbox queue. <clears throat> okay, start it. So all the ports will be scheduled by Unicorn instead of the default scheduler. And uh, you can see also the ports are coming in the also, we can take a look at the queue. Look at the the blue bar here, which means the resource is used in under this queue, and uh, the sandbox queue. All the resources are are used by the application we just submitted. And the, from the application page, we can see this is the application we just submitted, and um, it used the resource almost 100 gigabytes. Uh, that's the total resource available in sandbox queue. And um, click the job. We can see view the details of the allocations. And um, this is the list of the allocations we have done um, for this application. And. Um, Next, then submit another job. Let's submit a job to another queue. This is an advertisement queue, a similar job, 50 ports, and it will use 100 gigabytes memory. Let's do it. So, create. This is the second job. In, in the jobs, we can see the second job is submitted and the ports being scheduled. And the, from the UI, we can see under root the advertisement queues also have some resource being used. Once all the um, ports are started, we, we also can take a look at the Applications. This is the job we just submitted. It also has 50 ports running. And um, from the queues page, we can see how much resource we left in the in the cluster. So then, let's try to submit a Spark Spark application. So this is the script used to submit a Spark job. Um, we're submit to 
Kubernetes, deploy mode is cluster, and uh, this is a simple Spark Pi job. And we have five executor instances. Um, we have specified the uh, pod template here in order to like Spark ports being scheduled by, by Unicom. So let's take a look at the pod template. This is the pod template we use here. And we define the labels about the application ID, the queues, and also the resources used here. Schedule name is Unicom. And let's run this script to submit this Spark job. In the applications, we can see the Spark Spark job is submitted, and uh, it will also indicate how how many resources of each driver and executor being used. Also, in the port, we can see the Spark. Yeah, the Spark job has just finished. And um, also, we can try to submit another Spark job to Sandbox queue because the queue's resource already um, used that. So um, the Spark job will be pending there. So we can have the Sandbox Spark. And uh, let's try to submit this. This will submit a Spark job to the sandbox queue, and um, because this queue has no free resource, that means the job Spark job will be pending. As you can see, the driver is pending, and it cannot be scheduled because there is no resource under the sandbox queue. Yeah, that's pretty much the demo here. Thank you.